Yeah, so far the zest is made out of this size block which is longer and is needed for the floor and the roof but they've become increasingly unavailable zest owners have been telling me and they'd prefer to be able to make the zest out of the more standard and easily available blocks like this one but you see how light they are I can pick them up with two fingers and they've got an insulation quality that's important for keeping the bees warm and dry in the winter. So what we've got here is the standard zest foundation, which is comprised of a 600 millimeter paving slab, which is, is, which is laid flat and level. And onto that is placed these four foundation blocks, heavyweight concrete blocks, and, uh, and the carrying beams, of which there's two, upon which the zest hive sits. Well, this is a support for uh, a piece of plywood that goes there, which tends to spread the load of the blocks. There's three stacks of blocks here. This one is for the floor, which is carried by that plywood. These are for the walls. That's two courses of uh, blocks for the walls. And then there's another roof blocks which are the same as the floor the important thing is that they are a block and a half in order to get the half blocks what you do is take a whole block measure it precisely halfway and then use a handsaw to cut it which is very easy set the blocks out centered Right, this is the carrier frame, but in order to get the walls in the right place, what we do is set it up on the floor, mark it round, and then take it away again, and then build the walls to those lines. Yeah, the carrier frame is now assembled and it needs to be centred in both directions because that is the line where the inner face of the wall comes, which I'll mark with this screwdriver.
to check that we've got that accurate, we go and get the carrier frame and we put it on there. Perfect, but let us check it finally with the, the Zest Queen Excluder. Perfect, Queen won't get past there at all. Okay, so now I'm now going to load the Zest Hive with the plastic um, Queen excluders, partition boards and the frames. I'm going to load it for winter mode, which gives six, uh, which gives you a colony at each end on six frames to over winter. But then what you can do just before the honey flow the following year, you can take your, the um, oldest or the worst queen out and unite them. So right at the beginning of the honey flow, you've doubled the size and strength of your colony to collect lots of honey. This is uh, where the queen is for the winter with the stores and the brood. And the petition. Turn up the other end. What's important to realise is that uh, you don't have put any wax. The, the bees will draw the uh, spine of the comb, the honeycomb, back down from the, that tail of the tea there. And these frames, when they've been dealt with, will look like that. You can see they're centred nicely. Bit of drone comb, but basically that's a well-organised frame, isn't it? And also, once... Um, if you want to expand, you make it so that um, you put these drawn combs in between two undrawn ones and you're not dividing the brood in that way because they'll then draw out those two with that acting, the one that's already got comb on will act as a template for the new ones. So we've got four choices of bee openings on each side and one at each end. But in order to make the openings open, you can do that. And if there's wasps about or it's cold, you can reduce it right back down to that. And it's trickle cross entry and ventilation. So winter mode, of course, we insulate that there and there. And then we put the queen excluder to hold it tight against where you need to keep the warmth in the winter. So these are now spare for in the spring. And you always make best use of this insulation. If it was a big colony, which it would be, in the middle, you still put insulation at each end to stop the, any um, warmth leaking away into other parts of the hive that aren't occupied. And there is, of course, no reason why this insulation shouldn't stay all the year round in, in the hive to close off the um, brood area. Right, at each end we've got a, a queen with their colonies and in the middle here we've just got empty frames. And now I want to show you how we combine these two colonies to double the strength in the early spring before the honey flow. Take this out.
and you make use of the uh, other queen just to make up a new colony. Got a polythene cover sheet which stops the, the bees sticking anything to what goes on the top. But that's there and what goes on the top is a piece of plastic like the floor. And again, it's centered in both directions. That's it. Yeah, this roof piece of roof plywood is the same as the floor and it carries the weight of the blocks, which I'll now show you. All this picking up and putting down of blocks, it's a bit of a fiddle, but these blocks are 39 times better in terms of their insulation value than a thin walled hive, and that's a dry one. So it's worth having, and the bees love it. They only use half of the um, winter stores of a, a wood hive as well. The other thing to remember, of course, about these aerated concrete blocks is that they have a weight to them and they have a thermal weight, a bit like a, a storage heater, so that the cool of the night is carried into the heat of the day and the heat of the day is carried through into the um, cool of the night. The temperature is constantly being moderated. It doesn't go up and down so much. So that's the last of the insulation and then it's just a case of keeping it watertight with this or something very similar. First get your ropes untied and unknotted. So this piece of tin is under tension, of course, and we haven't lost one yet. And it's scrap as well. Always good if you can use scrap. 